What's up, welcome back. In this series, you're learning how to build a newsletter platform powered by Stripe Connect, we're using SendGrid, Ruby on Rails, Tailwind UI. It's a really fun project. And so far we've got authentication done, creating a newsletter. We dropped in some Tailwind UI components to make it feel a little bit cleaner. In this episode, you'll see how to author a newsletter issue. This is the actual email that's gonna be sent to your audience and to your subscribers. So let's get into it. This is gonna be another sort of CRUD episode where we're gonna build out issues. So let's generate a new model that represents an issue or an individual sort of posting or newsletter email that is gonna be sent. So we're gonna say Rails G model, let's call it issue. And it will be related to a newsletter. So an issue will belong to a newsletter. It's gonna have a subject, some content that is text, and it'll have a published date time and for now, we might also want some like, you know, visibility that has like private, public, et cetera. But for now, we'll just call this good and create our issue. So let's open up this create issues migration and make sure that this looks like we want it to look. Okay, so issues all belong to a specific newsletter. They have a subject, null, false. We only, we want these both to be required. And yeah, but the like it should be pretty good i don't know at least to start if we jump over to the terminal again we'll say rails db migrate to make that change to the database then we'll open up our issue model here confirm that it belongs to a newsletter we'll also go to the newsletter and say that a newsletter has many issues okay that looks fine all right so now what we want to do is add a controller called the issues controller and this will be where you can create an issue and maybe also update the issue. Yep, so let's go over to our Rails G controller issues. It's gonna have a new, it'll have a show. We probably also want an index and we probably want an edit. Yeah, that should be good. The idea is that you can create an issue and then edit it a bunch of times. And then eventually you'll click a button that says send this or you will schedule it to be sent at a later date. So we do want the idea, like the concept of editing an issue. Also, after you send out the email, if someone's like, hey, you spelled this wrong or whatever, you can edit it so that the hosted version looks correct. All right, let's go to our routes. We wanna add again, like resources, issues, go to our issues controller. And here we want to make sure that people are logged in. So before action, we want to authenticate the users. Okay, for our index route, this is gonna be it's like at issues is current user issues. Now, each user can be either an author or a reader. And in this case, when we're talking about the list of issues, we might want different concepts of the issues that I'm reading through the dashboard and issues that I've authored. So we'll need to build our association on the user model back to issues. So we can say has many issues through newsletters. This would give us the issues that we have authored, right? Because the newsletters that are related to the user are the newsletters that we have, that we are the author for. So we're gonna come back later and handle sort of what it, what it means to be a reader of these things. But for now, we'll just say that this is gonna be current user.issues. So for the show, we're gonna say, we don't wanna show an issue to someone who is not subscribed to that newsletter. So we'll come back and do this one later. Okay. The new route, this is where we're going we're gonna to fetch the form for authoring a new issue. So we can say at issue is issue.new and then create is going to be at issue is current user.issues.new. And then if it was saved, we'll redirect to issues. Otherwise, we'll render new. We're just going to follow the same sort of crud pattern that we did for newsletters. And we're moving pretty quickly because we want to get to the meat and potatoes, which is how do we monetize this stuff? And how do we set this? How do we set this all up? So params that require issue dot permit. And then I can't remember what we called it. Okay. So we want to allow them to send in the subject. So I'm looking right here at the columns that are inside of the issues table. We care about the subject and the content and the published at. So subject, content and published at all right so those are the params that we want users to be able to control all right for the edit view we want to retrieve at 
issue is equal to current user dot issues dot find params ID. And then for the update, we want to do something like find the thing and then try to update it with the issue params. If it doesn't work, redirect, or if it works, go to the issues path. Otherwise, re-render the edit view and then we're off to the races. Okay, we're moving pretty quickly, but again, we're trying to get back to the idea of working with the platform. So if we go to slash issues, this is the issues index route. So let's go to the issues index. And I think what we're gonna want here is something very similar to what we have in the newsletters index, right? So we have this newsletter index. Um, this big table here is gonna be something super similar for issues. Instead of newsletters, we're gonna say issues. A list of all the issues you have authored. I don't know, add an issue. And then instead of newsletters, issues, issue. And this is where it gets to be different. So we're gonna have issue.subject, edit issue path for the issue. And issue.subject. Okay, so here's the list of all of the issues you have authored. Notice too that we don't actually have any content here. Yeah, so what we could do is to improve our like form is say something like if at issues.empty, then we want like another view, which is just gonna be like, I don't know. Yeah, create a new issue to get started. Right, like you kind of want these blank concepts to fit in there. That's, I, I don't know, I think it's it's fine to not have it out of the gate. But, all right, so a list of all the issues you've authored, add an issue, that should bring us to the issues new. So this we want to be issues new. Is there any more newsletter stuff on this for you? Okay, all right. So we'll go back, refresh, add issue. This is our issues thing. Okay, so instead of building out the issue form directly here, we're just gonna start by saying render form and we'll build out our partial be directly as we go. So again, this is going to be similar to our other form here where we want this path and we want, instead of newsletter, we're going to use issue and our form is going to be the action for our form will be path. The method is going to be post. And it's actually going to be like pretty similar. Yeah. We'll just like grab all this stuff and then change all of these to issue. Okay, refresh. Something went wrong. What went wrong? Let's look at our undefined method title for issue. Right, okay, so there is no idea of title. So this is gonna be subject. So here we can change all the title to subject and see if we've got something good. Okay, so create an issue. So it starts with the subject a plucky subject for your subscribers. We're also going to want them to pick which newsletter this is for. So we're going to have a drop down list here. Sorry, I went super fast with that first part because it is almost the same as creating newsletters. So if you are curious, head back two episodes, look at how we created newsletters and then how we built out these partials for them. So we're moving quickly here. This is going to be, again, this is going to be a drop down for the newsletter. Okay, so this is actually, we want this to be the issue newsletter ID and the value here. Oh, so this is actually not gonna be a, an input box. This is gonna be a select box. Let's go over here to our Tailwind UI. We're gonna look at our forms and our select menus so that we can grab one that looks cool and we'll drop that in. And we've already installed Tailwind CSS forms as a plugin for Tailwind. And here, okay, so this is gonna be instead of location, this is gonna be newsletter. And the name in this case, again, is gonna be issue newsletter underscore ID. That is gonna be the ID of the newsletter that this author owns and will let us spit out what we want. So instead of location, this is going to be newsletter. And let's see here. Okay, so for the options, we want to iterate over current users, iter the current users' newsletters. And for each newsletter that the current user 
has, we're gonna spit out an option and the, the contents of the option we want to display is n.title and the value of the option is gonna be n.id. So now if we refresh our page, we should see a dropdown list of all of the newsletters. Cool, we also see the subject. Another thing we might wanna do is add like a class to our form base y4, let's see. That will just gives us a consistent space between all the inputs in here. In this case, maybe we wanna send a new addition for my newsletter number two. We're gonna give it a subject and we also wanna give it a body, right? So let's go back here, we'll go to our components. We're gonna search for text areas and we'll just use this first one because it looks pretty good. Again, we don't care about this part. Okay, so instead of comment, this is gonna be content and the name here needs to be issue with the square brackets content. All right, so in the case of the edit view, if we're editing an existing issue, we want to make sure that the newsletter that the issue was originally for is selected on the select box. So what we can do is check to see, we'll print out selected if the issue dot newsletter ID is equal to n dot ID. This is one of those things where it's handled for you if you use Rails form helpers. I am, I do not use Rails form helpers. Instead, I like to use HTML because it makes it really quick for copying between Tailwind UI and dropping it in here. I had the same experience with Bootstrap and with Ulma and with a bunch of other CSS frameworks. It's just much faster for me to just quickly drag and drop. Now I notice this is misspelled, selected. All right, so we'll have to come back and make sure that the right newsletter is selected and that the content for the issue is still in here. So one thing about text areas is if you break these onto new lines and say, at issue.content like this, then it considers all of this white space before and up to the previous line as like part of the part of the content that should be included inside of like the text of the text area. So I like to do it like this where I'll break and I'll move the closing angle bracket for this like first text area tag to the next line so you can see the same stuff. All right, let's test this out. So like first issue content and let's select the testing again so that it's at the bottom of the list. So when we go to edit, we'll be able to tell whether or not this worked. So let's say create issue. If it fails, we're being redirected back, but we don't have any, any feedback about the errors that are happening, which is like, whatever, it's, that's another thing we can figure out later. Unpermitted, unpermitted parameter newsletter ID. That is something that we do need to allow from our issues controller. So inside of our permitted params, we also want to have newsletter ID. I'm also remembering that we want to publish that. So let's grab a, I think we can just use the normal text area and then call it a date time. All right, so we'll just use a, a normal date. Or I'm, I'm sorry, like a normal input box. So this is going to be for published at and the type is gonna be a date time. And the name here again is gonna be issue for published at. And the, yeah, we'll just remove the placeholder and we're gonna say this is published at. And we also need this to have the right value. This is, this is like also like tricky because it wants it in a specific format. So for now, we'll just say at issue.published at. That's not gonna work though. So we'll have to come back and format it so that it conforms to HTML, the HTML spec. All right, so published at, why is this not a date time? Is it like date time local or something? There's, there we go. All right, so now this is like a, a built-in date picker and you can say, all right, 12. Yeah, we want it to send at that time. All right, so add your content. So this is gonna be some tests, testing again, click create issue. All right, now we have an issue, fantastic. All right, so let's see if the edit view, if we were to reuse the same form on the edit view, so issue new, issue edit, is this going to work? Okay, so we've got the right newsletter is picked, the same subject, the test content was correct, but our published at was not pre-populated. And that's because if we look at the content here, you'll notice that the value in this case looks like this, 2023-03-08 space, and then it has UTC. But if you look up the MDN date time local value, then it's a different format that we need to use. So let's go take a look at what that should be. 
And yeah, so it should have like the T sort of format that, ha that includes the T. So now we can look up like Rails format date time with T. I don't know. Okay, so we want this strf time thing. And then which one do we want? We want it to look like, yeah, it should have dashes and then the T and then the time. We'll just grab this for now and start messing around. So we want our value in published at to be like published at dot strf time. Is that right? String format strf time. Yeah. And then we give it this string value and that's going to format it in a certain way. And let's just see if that works does not work because it doesn't want this like ending bit here. It wants, yeah. So it wants just that first part. So instead of colon Z, no, let's see. Ooh, did that work? Hey, that works. Okay, cool. Perfect. All right. So then if we were to pick, let's pick a different time. So let's make it on the 9th at 414 AM and say update issue. Now, if we say edit, now it's on the 9th at 4.14 a.m. Okay, fantastic. So now we have this concept of published at, and it could be in the future, it could be in the past, doesn't really matter. We have some content, we've got a subject, and all right. So that is creating issues, creating newsletter issues. And now we need to go through in the next episode and talk about how we actually send these issues out as emails. Now, because we have this concept of a published at, we may or may not want to have a button here that says send now. Or we may also want to default published at to right now or something, and then build a background task that goes and checks. So we'll talk about that all in the next episode. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.